Hello friends, welcome to the session on 8085 architecture. In this session, we will see what we mean by 8085. What is the block diagram of the microprocessor 8085? And also we will discuss the pins of the microprocessor 8085. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel and do subscribe to the channel to see many more videos on the various topics of the subjects of electronics and computer science. So let us start the session with the question, what is 8085 or 8085? Intel 8085 or many times it is being pronounced as 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor. And this microprocessor was introduced long back in 1986. So this is a photo of a typical 8085 microprocessor where one can easily observe that this is in IC form. And this IC has 20 pins on one side and 20 pins on other side. So you can say that it is a 40 pin IC. So this 40 pin IC is a very useful IC and it can function or it can perform a lot of jobs. And this IC is popularly can be used as a controller IC. So in the number 8085, this 5 indicates that this IC will require only a 5 hole power supply. And this 8 will indicate that this is an 8 bit microprocessor. And that is the reason the number 8085 is there. Because earlier version of this microprocessor, which was introduced by the Intel organization, was 8080 or 8080. And therefore, the this microprocessor has been given a number 8085. 8085 is an integrated circuit. So whenever we think of an integrated circuit, then we know that a lot many transistors and other electronic components are used in the circuit. And this integrated circuit, or in short, we call it as an IC. It can process the interest instructions which are applied to this IC. And these instructions are processed in a very short span of time. And it is being called as a microseconds. And that is the reason this IC is being called as a microprocessor, because this is the IC which can process the instructions. And the time required for the processing is very short and it is in microseconds. This is uh, the microprocessor that uh, we normally include in the syllabus of electronics or computer science. Because this is the microprocessor that is most easy to understand. So whenever you want to continue your study in the subject of microprocessor, then it is always better that if you study 8085 first, then it is quite easy for you to understand the recent microprocessors. So those who want to pursue their studies in the area of microprocessors, for them, the study of 8085 is very useful. So even though <clears throat> this microprocessor is an old one, you will find that still it can be used in various applications. So for example, it is possible that we can use this in washing machines in order to design the controller for the washing machines. We can use it in microwave ovens or even it can be used in mobile phones. The simple microprocessor based systems can be designed by using 8085. So microprocessor based systems such as traffic control systems, printing machines or security systems can be built around this IC 8085. It can be used in uh, modern medical instruments also. So even though uh, this is an old IC, which was introduced uh, something uh, 40 years back in 1976, still you will find that this IC is useful as far as the study 
of microprocessor is concerned. So before we actually go for the discussion of uh, 8085U, let us understand how the microprocessors are evolved over a period of time. So the earlier microprocessor which was introduced by the Intel was given the number 8080 and one can easily observe that this microprocessor was having a clock speed of 2 megahertz and the data width is of 8 bits. Later on in 1976, this microprocessor 8085U was introduced, which was having initially the clock speed of 3 megahertz. Now it is possible that we can have the higher clock speed versions of 8085U. And this microprocessor is also having the data width of 8 bits. Later on, we have 8086, then 8088, then 286, 386, and 486 microprocessors. And one can easily observe that the number of transistors which are incorporated goes on increasing. And also the speed and the data width also goes on increasing. Later on, we have the Pentium microprocessors. Then we have the Core 2 microprocessor. And then we have the Intel 64-bit microprocessors of which the speed is in gigahertz. Nowadays, whenever you go for the purchase of the microprocessor, then one can easily observe that the various microprocessors are available in the market. So for example, we can have Core 2 Duo, we have i5, i3, i7. So these are the microprocessors which are having a very high speed, a very high clock speed. That is their operating speed is very fast and they can process the instructions in a very short span of time. So before we actually go for the block diagram of 8085U, let us understand what we mean by the microprocessor based system. A microprocessor based system is a system which consists of microprocessor and some related devices. The related devices such as input output devices memory and system bus. So any microprocessor based system you can say consists of a microprocessor where the microprocessor itself contains arithmetic and logic unit, some resistors and control unit. And there is a connection between the input output devices and microprocessor. Also there is a memory section and there is a connection between memory, IO and the microprocessor. So microprocessor, as I said, it is a programmable device that can read the binary instructions from the memory. And according to the instruction, it will accept the input and it will process the data. And so that we can have some result as the output. So microprocessor unit consists of the arithmetic and logic unit. And therefore all arithmetic instructions and logical instructions can be processed by the microprocessor. Microprocessor contains arithmetic and logic unit. In short, we call it as an ALU. It contains some resistors where the data can be stored temporary. And it also has the control unit, which will control the overall operation of the microprocessor. Arithmetic and logic unit can perform the arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, increment, decrement, logical operations such as AND or NOT can be performed by using the ALU. Resistors are used for the temporary storage of the data during the program execution. And it is possible that some of these resistors can be accessed through the instructions written for the microprocessor. The control unit will provide the necessary timing and control signals that are being required in the various operations. Memory is used to store the binary information. So whenever we want to store the binary information, such as instructions and data, then for that purpose, we can make the use of memory. There are various input devices that can be connected to such system. And those are, those are such as keyboard switches. And also we can connect some output devices, such as LED display or CRT display to the microprocessor based system. 
so system also has a communication path and that path is being called as a system bus so whenever you think of any computer system then this computer system is just nothing but a microprocessor based system because in computer uh, when you see the cpu of the computer or central processing unit then in the central processing unit there is a microprocessor this screen is a output device and this keyboard or mouse is an input device and inside this box there is also the memory and the system bus so any microcomputer or any laptop that we are been using or any tablet or even now any mobile phone that we have been using is just nothing but an example of the microprocessor based systems now let us go for understanding the block diagram of 8085 8085 is a microprocessor which consists of various blocks as shown in this figure so for example we have here an arithmetic and logic unit and this unit is being used to perform the various arithmetic and logical operations also one can easily find that the accumulator then the register array is there then the flags are there so all these units <coughs> are very closely associated with the arithmetic and logic unit so whenever arithmetic and logic unit perform any operation then it requires the access of accumulator and the register array and the flags so accumulator one can say that it is an 8 bit register and this register is being used whenever we want to uh, compute any result of the operation and the result of the operation is always available in the accumulator the register array is an array of register there are there are several registers and some of these register are 8 bit registers and some of the registers are 16 bit registers as shown in this diagram so bc <coughs> then de hl these are the general purpose registers hl pair can be used for the address pointing and w and z these are the registers that can hold the 8 bit of data so you can make the use of these registers and you can make an access to these registers through the instructions there are certain special registers such as program counter where program counter will contain the address of the next instruction to be executed so in order to execute a sequence of instructions the program counter will contain the address of the next instruction that is to be executed stack pointer is also a special register which will contain the address of the top of the memory which is being called as a stack also there are flags in the microprocessor and these there are five flags the sign flag the zero flag auxiliary carry flag parity flag and carry flag so these are the flags and these flags are affected during the arithmetic instructions so whenever the microprocessor process some arithmetic instructions then these flags are affected the sign flag is set to 1 if the bit d7 of the result is 1 the zero flag is set to 1 if the arithmetic and logic unit operation will result in zero that is all bits are zero auxiliary carry flag is being set to one if the bit d3 becomes one and it is being passed on to the d4 so such type of the operation is being required in whenever we process some bcd data the parity flag is set to one whenever there is an even parity in the result even parity it will stand for the even number of ones in the accumulator the carry flag is being set to 1 if the carry is generated during the arithmetic operations so whenever we want to check for if the carry is generated or not then that can be checked by using this carry flag the instruction register is there and this instruction register is being used to hold the opcode of the instruction to be executed so whenever we want to execute a particular instruction then that 
instruction of code will be hold by the instruction register. Also, one can easily find that in this block diagram, there are different interrupt controls. Say, for example, we have the interrupt controls or hardware interrupts such as track RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5, then complement of interrupt acknowledge and interrupt request. So these interrupts are used whenever we want to transfer the control of the program flow to the specific location. There is also serial IO control, the serial input data, SID and serial output data, SOD. This is being used for the serial transmission of the data. Timing and control unit is there. So this uh, unit will generate the necessary timing and control signals, which are required in the operation of the microprocessor. So one can easily observe that there are several inputs and outputs for this timing and control circuit. The data bus for the 8085 microprocessor is a 8-bit data bus. That is, it is possible that you can process only 8-bit data by making the use of 8085. The address bus is a 16-bit address bus. And since the address bus is of 16-bit, and therefore it is possible that we can make an access of 64 kilo memory locations. So 64 kilobyte memory can be accessed by using 8085 microprocessor. The clock frequency of the microprocessor is three megahertz. But as I said, there are different versions where it is possible to have a higher clock speed up to six megahertz for 8085. Now this is a pin diagram. As I told you that this microprocessor 8085 is a 40 pin IC. And therefore on one side we have 20 pins and on the other side we have 20 pins. So these pins are shown in this diagram where the serial IO ports makes the use of SID and SOD externally initiated signals or uh, interrupt signals are shown in this part of the diagram. Then external signal acknowledgement can be given by the pin 11 and 38. The reset out or clock out can be given by the pins 3 and 37. The control and status signals are being generated by making the use of these pins. And this is a multiplexed address data bus. That is, the address data bus is being shared by the address as well as by the data. So that is the reason it is being called as a multiplex address data bus. And you will find that uh, this is a higher order data bus. So only eight pins are shared and the higher order address bus is again we have a separate pins for the higher order data bus and this ic will require a positive five volt power supply and it is being applied at the pin 40 and pin 20 is being connected to the ground so thank you friends for viewing the session hopefully you have understood what we mean by 8085 and what is the basic block diagram of microprocessor 8085. Thank you all for viewing the session.